Well, good afternoon, good day, and good morning whenever you're going to watch this video. Everybody, welcome to another edition here of the Washington Football Maniacs YouTube channel. My name is Greg. If you're new here, thank you for joining us. I try to put out videos as much as I possibly can. It's a little bit more sporadic uh, during the summer months. Uh, a little bit more frequent, I guess you would say, during the uh the season so uh with that said if you like the content please consider subscribing and when you do subscribe make sure that you hit that notification bell because you never know when these videos will be released i don't ever really know when i'm going to release these videos with that said let's get into today's video so as we wrapped up all of the otas and it seems like Ron Rivera and company were pretty happy overall with uh, how things progressed. You know, this is the first year with Eric Bandemi on board, and he really seemed like he commanded, no pun intended, um, the flow of the offense through OTAs, really establishing early how the just the, the timing, you know, getting the timing down pat. I tell you, that is one intricate detail that you really want to have in an offense, timing. It's one thing that I've noticed throughout the, the past several seasons, and this, honestly, this goes back probably almost a decade, it seems like, that timing has always been the issue with these offenses. It's like, hurry up, guys, hurry up, hurry up. I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm watching the game and I'm looking at the the clock and I'm like why are these guys just lackadaisical you know you have guys trotting off the field trotting on the field you know it's not like the the old days in the 80s when you had what was a 45 second game clock and literally I mean you had all the time in the world to make your substitutions to get in the right play to huddle, to make sure that all the guys are lined up properly. I mean, almost never did you see people having to, you know, quarterbacks having to call timeout because, you know, people were not lined up properly. They didn't have the right people in or whatever. You see a lot of that nowadays, and, and we would see that a lot with our offense. And I think that's one thing that Eric Benemy is trying to instill within OTAs is the timing, like getting things crisp, getting in and out of the huddles as crisp and as diligently and as sufficient as possible because this is one thing that really helps. Well, I mean, it's a huge thing that helps during the regular season and the flow of your offense. You're able to get in, in and out of the huddles. A lot of times you're not gonna huddle, you're just gonna kind of go on a kind of a quick thing anyway. You, you wanna be able to be ready. And there's gotta be a sense of urgency, not just with the quarterback, who obviously has gotta have his timing down, it's everybody. Everybody's got to have that clock in their head on the offense. Like, okay, next play. As soon as the whistle blows, next play, next play, next play. And so I think those are some of the things that Eric Bieniemy is instilling uh, during the OTAs. Now, you know, switching to the defense, we have heard all of these rumors. I, I keep seeing, you know, all of these articles um, editorials coming up suggesting about trades and uh, Chase Young going to Pittsburgh, how he would fit in extremely well with the Steelers and how he would fit really well with this team and that team. And somebody is really trying their best to push the narrative that, <laughs> excuse me, that the Washington Commanders should trade Chase Young while they can. Mm. Very good coffee. Finally got a new Keurig. Um, and 
folks, here's here's the thing. Right now, I don't think that Chase Young would have much of a trade value because you can't go on his rookie season. And if you trade him now, you're getting probably a fifth round. And honestly, you trade him for a fifth rounder and he goes somewhere else and he becomes the Chase Young that he was in his rookie season, you've lost that trade, in my opinion. So I don't think that you go and you trade Chase Young. I think you hold on to him. I think you let him go through a, a prove-it year, make it or break it. Um, and again, no pun intended on that. I know he didn't break anything, but he, he was injured. You see how well he rebounds from the injury. You see if he can be the Chase Young that he was prior to, the, to that injury, and if not, even better. And then you can make that decision. If you can't come up with a deal, then you tag him, and then maybe you try to trade him. But at that point, he's going to have some value because people are going to see Okay, Chase Young is back. Um, he had an excellent season. You know, he's back to his first rounder, you know, second overall pick um, level. So he would be a very attractive choice for any team who needs a high caliber defensive end. The thing is, I think Washington is going to need him um, in the future. Because right now you got Montez Sweat, who I'd give him the edge and say Montez Sweat right now is is much better than Chase Young. And we don't know if we're going to be able to keep Montez Sweat because it's coming up on his year as well. So you've got to be able to sign Montez Sweat and Chase Young. And what if we lose Montez Sweat? You can only tag one of those guys. So I don't think you go and you just trade Chase Young now and not know what you have with him. We still don't know what we have in Chase Young, which is the reason why we did not pick up his fifth year option. Um, We don't, we just don't know what we had with him. You know, if he has started his second season out, uh, a continuation of what he was in his rookie season before he got hurt, then you would say, okay, he was he was on a trajectory upward. We know what we had in him. He got hurt, unfortunately. Um, I think we've seen enough that we know, okay, first year was not a fluke. Second year, he was more of the same. So maybe at that point we would have picked up his fifth-year option. Um, but... As it stands right now, I don't think you trade Chase Young. I think you keep him. I think we're going to need him. I I know last year we did really well without him, but I'm not ready to give up on Chase Young just yet. I know a lot of people are. Uh, You know, this is one of those, you know, we're living in an age where it's instant gratification. Uh, Thanks to, I think, the Internet, (laughs) Uh, the, the web has, has brought on instant gratification. Anything you want right there at your fingertips. And so we've gotten that mentality in our heads now. And we, we That's leaked out through all of our lives. So now we expect it in our football players and, and, and sports. We expect things to, to be right there improved. <clears throat> and um, I think we just got to give Chase Young some time. Overall, I'm excited. There, there has been so much positivity around this team, and I think it's because of new ownership. Um, you know, getting ready to go into a new era with Josh Harris, um, Eric Bieniemy being on board. There, there seems to be such a change um, in direction with that. I think he's going to be a perfect complement to Ron Rivera and uh, Jack Del Rio as well. So. There's a lot of things to look forward to coming up in this uh, in this coming season. So make it or break it for everybody, man. It is because if, they, if things don't happen, then 
Josh Harris is going to say, take a good look at all this because it's going to be completely different next year. All right, folks. That's what I've got to say about that today. Um, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a like, give it a share. Um, these videos are not getting out to the folks. Um, also, um, just to let you know, I'm going to be having a co-host coming up. Uh, so if you've stuck with me so far, I probably should have announced this at, at the beginning. Um, so Brandon Scott, um, he has a podcast on um, uh, the Washington Wizards. I'm going to be bringing him on. He's going to be talking uh, commanders with me on this channel. And uh, we're hoping to, that maybe we can try to get this started up on Sunday night um, to be announced as far as the exact time, but we'll have it scheduled. I'll try to maybe put up an announcement on the channel as far as uh, what time to expect that uh, so please come out this is a very exciting thing for this channel uh, I'm very excited to have Brandon on with me it quite frankly it's going to be a lot easier to be able to have somebody there to converse with me as far you know as opposed to me just sitting here talking to a camera uh, talking to nobody <laughs> I mean I know I'm talking to all of you guys who are watching the recordings but um it's definitely a lot easier and it seems like it makes more sense and it's a lot more enjoyable uh when you're sitting back and watching a conversation um so i'm excited about that uh so can't wait to bring that to you guys and uh with that said take care i'll see y'all in the next one